Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello, everyone. So, someone brought to my attention a bit of a funny and weird interpretation on the Pure Land Dharma and Master Shandao's teachings. So, today I'd like to discuss what exactly did Master Shandao teach and maybe to clarify some points which could lead to misunderstanding and confusion. So Master Shan Da is the second patriarch of Chinese Pure Land Buddhism. He is also known as the actual founder of Pure Land Buddhism. It is really through Master Shan Da's effort in the Tang Dynasty that Pure Land Buddhism has been established as a proper school in China and it became so prevalent and eventually surpassing Chen in China. So Master Shen Dao is also regarded as the actual founder of Chinese Pure Land Buddhism. But because there was also Master Hui Yuan before him that promoted the Pure Land Dharma, so Master Hui Yuan is regarded as the first patriarch and Master Shen Dao is the second patriarch in Chinese Pure Land Buddhism with a total of 13 patriarchs. So in China, there's just one school of Pure Land Buddhism. Okay. And uh, there are some a bit uh, funny interpretations on Amitabha Buddha's vows. So uh, I heard uh, some people said uh, the 18th vow, where if we recite the name of Amitabha Buddha, uh, even for 10 recitations, we can be born in his pure land. So this is considered as the other power, whereas the 19th and the 20th vow, uh, the 19th vow talk about to generate bodhicitta, to cultivate various merit and to transfer towards rebirth. One will definitely be reborn in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. And the 20th vow is also about to cultivate uh, all virtues of good roots and to transfer merit towards being reborn in the pure land. And one can also be reborn in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. So some people say the 19th and the 20th are uh, considered as self power with a self power orientation. It's considered as a mixed or miscellaneous practice which harbor doubts like self power practice. So I really don't know where do this interpretation come from. It's definitely not in accordance to the Pure Land Sutras. So all the vows Amitabha made is to help deliver us to the Pure Land. If we were to be born in the Pure Land, we actually all rely on Amitabha Buddha's vow and power, whether we generate bodhicitta or not, whether we cultivate all kinds of merit or not. We need to name for, even if you name for, but you don't rely on Amitabha Buddha's power to deliver you. You can't go to the Pure Land. So even if you achieve Nian for Samadhi, you still need to vow to go to the Pure Land, to have faith in Amitabha Buddha's power to deliver you to the Pure Land. Because the Pure Land is the Buddha's Pure Land, it's generated by Amitabha Buddha's perfect enlightened mind and his great vows. Without Amitabha Buddha's vow to deliver us without us wanting to be delivered by Amitabha Buddha. Even if you realize Nian for Samadhi, you cannot go to Amitabha Buddha's Pure Land unless you are like highly, highly enlightened Bodhisattva like Guan Yin, then you can rely on your self power to go to Amitabha Buddha's Pure Land. So all these vows, 18th, 19th, 20th, we still need to rely on Amitabha Buddha's power to deliver us to the Pure Land. So in Chinese Pure Land Buddhism, we say the Pure Land practice is two power. We still need to generate faith and vow and near for, so do our job on our side. But to go to the Pure Land, really, we rely on Amitabha Buddha's great vows and power. We cannot actually go by ourselves. So even if we kneel for, we generate bodhicitta, we cultivate merit and transfer towards rebirth, we still rely on Amitabha Buddha's great vows to assist us to attain rebirth in his pure land. So you cannot say the 18th vow is the other power, whereas the 19th, the 20th are the self power and it still harbors doubts. It 
Nowhere in the sutra says anything like this, so I really don't know where this interpretation comes from and what's its basis. Master Shanda definitely did not teach like that. I, Amitabha Buddha made these great vows to receive us to the Pure Land. I, if we recite his name single-mindedly at the time of death, we can definitely be reborn in his Pure Land I, with faith and vow through Amitabha Buddha's great vows. And if we generate bodhicitta, we cultivate merits and to transfer towards being reborn in a pure land, we can also attain a higher grade of rebirth. Right? To generate bodhicitta, to observe the precepts, right? to cultivate all this good merit, it's to increase our provisions towards rebirth in the pure land. And there is a funny interpretation to say, oh, to generate bodhicitta, to observe precepts, these are like mixed practices and not encouraged or something. So let's look at what Master Shanda says about exclusive and mixed practices. So Master Shanda encouraged us to exclusively practice Nianfo. Oh, I like to use the word specialize, right? to specialize in the Pure Land practice, not to mix with other practices. But what is considered as specialized practice and what's considered as mixed practices? So let's look at what Master Shanda says in his commentary in the Visualization Sutra, right? which he details it clearly. So this is the book, Guan Jing Si Tie Shu, Master Shanda's commentary on the Visualization Sutra. In this book, I study word by word. See all my highlights, my notes. I study word by word with Master Zhen Shan, so I understand clearly what Master Shanda teach. Okay, on page 128 of this book, Master Shanda clearly uh, stipulates what's considered as specialized or exclusive uh, pure land practice and what's considered as miscellaneous practice. So when it comes to the right practices, the right Pure Land practices, what are the right practices? So in the right practices, Master Shanda talk about five right Pure Land practices. At first is one single-mindedly read or recite the Visualization Sutra, the Amitabha Sutra, the Infinite Life Sutra, etc. So if one read or recite the Pure Land Sutras, that this is considered one of the right Pure Land practices. And now we have the five Pure Land Sutras and one treatise. So if you study, you read, you recite the Sutras, it's considered one of the five right practices. Second is to focus, to think about, to visualize the Pure Land. So there is also the visualization method that's detailed in the Visualization Sutra or the Contemplation Sutra. Third is to single-mindedly pay homage to Amitabha Buddha. Fourth is to praise Amitabha Buddha. That is to single-mindedly recite the name of Amitabha Buddha. So the name for practice, Amitabha recitation. And fifth is to make offerings to Amitabha Buddha. So these five practices are considered as the right practices. And among these five practices, Master Shanda also points out that Amitabha recitation, so to recite the name of Amitabha Buddha, this should be considered as the primary practice, whereas the other four can be considered as supported practice. So you pay homage to the Buddha, you contemplate about the Pure Land, you recite or read Pure Land Sutras, you make offerings to Amitabha Buddha. So these other four are considered as supported practice, whereas name recitation is considered as the primary practice which Master Shanda advocates. So Master Shanda advocates us to single-mindedly reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha. You can of course prostrate at Buddha to read, to study the Pure Land Sutras, but those are supported practice. Your main practice, your primary practice should be the Nianfo practice. So I also follow Master Shanda's advice. I, my main practice, my primary practice is definitely Nianfo. 
So occasionally you may see me recite a mantra or dharani to learn a little bit. This are my dessert. Okay, so Master Ying Guan further expands at the point of what Master Shan Dao says. Like if you like to recite a mantra, maybe you really have a deep connection with Guan Yin. You really like to recite a great compassion mantra or dharani, whatever. But this should be your dessert, okay? Your main course should always be your Nianfo practice. Like Nianfo should always be your primary practice for Nianfo practitioners. Like if you like to recite a mantra, host a dharani, whatever, like this should just be uh, your secondary practice, like not so important practice. But if you practice the mantra, you practice the dharani, and you also transfer towards being reborn in Amitabha Buddha's pure land, that's also fine. But we just need to know that our primary practice should be Nianfo, like to recite the name of Amitabha. So the five right practices that I just talked about, I must shand out mentioned in the book, I, this can be considered as exclusive practice or to specialize a specialized pure land practice. The other practices are not considered as pure land practices. If you mix with other practices, it's considered as mixed practices, such as you practice pure land and Chen together, or pure land and Tibetan Buddhism together, or pure land and other schools of Buddhism together. I'm not saying other schools are not good. Right? Master Shen Dao or Master Ying Guang, they're not saying other schools are not good. But because each school has their different practices and different methods. If you want to be very good at something, it's important that we focus, right? we specialize in one thing so you can be a specialist in this area you can be an expert in this area I, all this path eventually also lead to the same goal but there are some practices that are much more difficult and complicated than others so for pure land practitioners I, we practice the easy path and we want to go deep in our practice so we can be single-minded if you want to be single-minded it's better that you don't focus on too many things. So we can obtain meditative concentration through our Nianfo practice. So we can go deep in our practice. It's like there are many gates that lead to the same hole. But if you really want to go into the hole, you need to choose one gate. You cannot be like, I simultaneously walk two gates together into the hole, right? Even for people who practice Pure Land and Chen, they need to be one primary practice. You actually cannot practice Pure Land and Chen simultaneously together. Why? Because the Pure Land way of Nianfo is that you recite the name of Amitabha with faith and vow to attain rebirth in the Pure Land. Whereas for the Chen way of Nianfo is that they contemplate on uh, who is Nianfo. Like who is behind this? Like who is Nianfo? So it's different directions. Like you cannot do two things or think about two things like this at the same time. Like this is not good for your practice. Like even for Pure Land and Chen, they need to be one primary practice. For some people, they really have strong karmic connection with the Chen school or even the Tibetan school. But you also really like the pure land practice. So uh, we recommend uh, as a pure land practitioner, I would say I make the pure land practice your primary practice because it's the easiest practice and it's the easiest for you to exit the cycle of samsara to attain rebirth in the pure land. When you are in the pure land, you have infinite life and uh, you have all the time in the world for you to practice all kinds of Dharma gates. But here we really don't have a lot of time to learn all different Dharma gates. But we really should just like, focus on one Dharma gate. Now, I've also heard a funny interpretation on the Pure Land Dharma is that uh, to Nianfo, to recite the name of Amitabha Buddha, to attain rebirth, there are no different grades. Whereas uh, with miscellaneous practices, there are different grades. Uh, this is a really wrong interpretation. Uh, 
doesn't matter what practice. If you want to go to the Pure Land, there are nine grades of rebirth. Whether we can go to the Pure Land or not depends on our faith and vow, and our level of practice determines our grade of rebirth. I see Master Oyi's interpretation on the Amitabha Sutra. And again, what we talk about as miscellaneous practice, I some people they think, oh, to generate bodhicitta, to observe the precepts, these are considered as mispractices. These are not mixed practices. These are basic practices in Buddhism. If it's mixed practices, then Master Shanda is doing mixed practices. Why? Master Shanda is renowned for observing the precepts stringently. Master Shanda is renowned for his great bodhicitta. So one cannot、uh, misinterpret the teachings and say, "Oh,、uh, to generate bodhicitta, to observe the precepts, these are like mixed practices, and one should not engage in mixed practices like this." I These are not mixed practices. Ah,、uh, these are basic practices. What's considered as mixed practices is that if you、um, do Chen and Pure Land, you do other schools and Pure Land, very different practices to Pure Land practices. These are considered as mixed practices. But again, before I talk about Master Ying Guang, also says、uh, you can hold a mantra if you like, but just make sure that your primary practice is your Nianfo, and other practices can be considered as supported practices. And when you do those supported practices, you still transfer the merit towards being reborn in the Pure Land, and that's also fine. And in this book, Master Shanda also talk about the nine grades of rebirth really clearly. I, for those who generate bodhicitta and nianfo, with good practice, one can attain the highest grade of rebirth. I, for those who don't have bodhicitta but observe the precepts and nianfo, one can obtain the middle grade of rebirth. For those who do evil, they have maybe not encountered the dharma, but at the end of Their life, they happen to encounter the Dharma, they know about Amitabha Buddha, and they repent sincerely of their evil deeds. Amitabha Buddha will still receive them, but they will attain the lowest grade of rebirth. So, Master Shanda talk about the nine grades of rebirth really clearly in his commentary on the Visualization Sutra, and I will also expound the sutras. The nine grades of rebirth in the Visualization Sutra. The Visualization Sutra is also called the Contemplation Sutra, according to Master Shanda's teachings. So, to generate bodhicitta is actually quite important for pure land practitioners, particularly if you want to attain the highest grade of rebirth. So, the nine grades of rebirth talk about bodhicitta and also the three levels of rebirth in the Infinite Life Sutra. Also mention bodhicitta. Remember, the Pure Land path belongs to the Mahayana, the Great Vehicle, and to really practice the Mahayana, one should really generate bodhicitta. To generate bodhicitta, it's not considered as mixed practices. I to observe precepts, to take three refuge, these are not considered as miscellaneous practice. I in this book, the opening of this book. Master Shanda first asked us to take the three refuge, and Master Shanda is renowned for being very stringent in observing the precepts and also his unsurpassed bodhicitta. So we should not misunderstand and misinterpret Master Shanda's teachings. So I hope I clarify some points in this video, and in the future we will also look at the sutras. Look at Master Shanda's teachings, and I'll also expand the sutras, the nine grades of rebirth, and according to Master Shanda's teachings. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabha.